In this movie I would like to present the basic uh, rare linkage maintenance on this specific by Montesa Honda, but uh, it will be very similar to the other Charles bikes. It's very important to look after the parts which are actually movable and then you will extend the life of the bike. We have a unique way of doing stuff, so uh, this is the one of the example. I'm not trying to be smart, I'm just trying to help. Our patient for today, it's a 300RR Montesa Honda and uh, I'm planning to do the rear linkage maintenance, so basically greasing. It's always a good idea to grease this stuff depends from the weather conditions you're riding but this is our interest so basically the whole linkage this is a, a rare shock all in but no it's a show sorry uh, then linkage and obviously the bone so this one here at the back and then at the front has a, a needle bearing this one has a needle bearing as well. I'm just putting my finger over there. And this one here, it's a connection to the uh, rear shock and has a very interesting, I don't remember what was the name of this bearing, but it's basically, it's like, a, it's working a little bit on the different directions, different uh, lunar. So usually when you have a loose actually in the rear suspension, it's usually actually this bugger here on the shock and then you can replace it and two weeks later you have exactly the same one millimeter loose so <clears throat> i don't think that this is a really crucial to replace this but uh i'm interested to grease this this obviously this one and then the front needle bearing and uh it's always a good idea to take a picture of what you want to work on and uh, so you remember which way goes uh, the bolts all those three bolts as i recall one two and three they're exactly the same uh the difference is that the way how they actually you mount them so basically this one's going on the uh, this direction and then you have a nut on the other side those two and then the one which is on the uh, top uh which is basically connected to the rear shock uh, has a nut on this side and this one here is completely different it's just basically has a allen head over there but the same nut so uh let's start it uh so i took off the chain already and uh, i clean it uh with the mineral oil and uh and grease it so it's ready for action and then i'm going to take off the for a rare wheel now and then let's see what kind of tools we need four millimeter socket which is going on the nut of the axle i have this crested wrench it's i think it's 22 millimeters i don't have it i have a limited uh, access to the tools so i have only so the crescent recent the crescent wrench will be okay to hold it when i take off the wheel and then when i torque to a specific 69 newtonometers when i tighten up the rear wheel <coughs> uh five millimeter i will probably what i'm going to do i'm going to grease the uh, uh chain uh, tensioner so i like to take this off and then just clean at the same time i also use this one i'm today i'm going to actually take off my uh, uh foot pegs will be easier access to uh to this bugger over there i just put the uh my uh allen key so it will be much easier access and this one is uh eight millimeters uh allen key then i have a 14 millimeters um socket and uh two flat 14 millimeters and obviously a torque wrench because honda is quite specific they want the specific torque on the on the rear linkage and uh, i will take a look in the manual what is exactly and i don't want to guess but i think it was 39 newtonometers Usually I, you know, all those trials bikes and probably Endura as well, it's a good idea to, um, to grease the linkage 
to prolong the lifespan, but also to keep the moisture away. You write more in a, in a water, in a dusty condition, than definitively uh, this kind of the maintenance I will do more, more often. I usually do twice a year. Uh, sometimes once depends you know how much I'm riding on the bike but if I'm riding in a wet condition definitively I will I will do it again I also like to check actually the rear brake uh, disc as well and then in this specific bike it's a uh, 10 millimeters uh, and then they have a specific torque as well uh, I will need to check it double check but I think it's 17 newtonometers and also it's a good idea to check the rear sprocket as well rear i had the brake disc mounting bolts there are four of them obviously six millimeters and they show 17 newtonometers which is a 12 and a half foot pounds so i couldn't find a specific for the rear sprocket but it's an eight millimeters bolt which basically gives you 22 which is newtonometers or 16 foot uh, pounds torque so 39 newtonometers which is about 29 uh, foot pounds so the rear axle nut it's a 69 newtonometers which is a 51 foot uh, pounds that's important you don't want to over tight or you don't want to be too loose because you need Fourteen millimeters, and then the Allen key. Well, I cheated a little bit. I loosened up this already, so I just basically take this one out. One. this one together and now I will have a good access to this bugger over there so this one is eight Allen key number eight and I will take a little bit So what I've done, I just put the tie down to make sure that this linkage is not going to fall on my head. And then <coughs> we'll go and then work our way to take off the linkage. Persuasion, and you can put it up. Okay. So you can see a very nice grease over there. It's a fresh grease, but as I said, you know, I didn't remember when I've done this. Oh, I this one need to be clean. Uh, it's a cover over there, uh, dust cover or some kind of the bushing. So this one have to take out. Uh, this one you can take it out as well. This will take out. I will clean all this stuff. Plus, I will make sure this whole part is going to be clean as well. Okay, so I'll just go and clean it and then just put them on the side so you can see what I took off and then I will clean it, regrease it and put it back. Okay, 
So um, I cleaned those parts. So um, this one here is a chain tensioner. So uh, it's very important uh, to remember that uh, they have a two O-rings over there. The one inside of the of the frame it's actually a bigger one, so it have to go first, uh, just like this. Then it will go. It will go to the to the opening here. Yes, from the other side. So I will put this one on the other side, and then before I actually do this, I will put the spring on. So I will put this one on. Okay. Then we have a small o-ring. You can put this o-ring on this very interesting looking uh, bolt and then just basically put it on. This one it's um, six millimeters, so I would say probably not more than 10 uh, newtonometers I'm going to tighten up, but I will go and grease this one before. Okay, so this is number one what I'm going to do. Number two, what is very important, it's obviously uh, the linkage. So this one here, it goes to a frame. So uh, it will go <coughs> over there. Number two from the linkage. So uh, this part so has a very interesting uh, uh, colors. It will go to the rear suspension, which is, come on, Mr. D, J, I. So we'll go here, okay, and it has a very interesting bearing inside. I don't know whether you can see it or not, maybe. And then this one here, it's a swing arm. And then to a swing arm, it will go this one. So uh, all together, I will try to pull this up so you can see all those parts together. They will just go like this, okay? This goes to the rear suspension. This one will go to a swing arm. This is obviously bone and this one goes to the frame from the bone. So what I will do right now, I will put this apart and then show you which parts are going where. Okay, so one more time to shot, uh, rear shock, uh, swing arm, the front frame, and then this is a connection. So when you take this off apart, you will see a bushing, bolt, and other stuff inside here. It's a dust seal on the both sides and uh, on the other side. So if we take this one apart, it's exactly the same. Okay, so those are the part for the for the rear uh, bone. And then obviously this one here has this very interesting uh, fitment or the bushings those are going to the rear suspension I'll just leave them over there so I know where to go so I don't have to double check with the other bike where they're supposed to go and uh, and obviously the one which is going to the needle bearing it's exactly the same as the other ones so they are exactly the same size as the other one so you have a three the same bushing so even if you mix them around it's not going to you're not going to mess around just uh, remember how this part goes and then if you think that the other trials bikes are immune to the dust water in the linkage well you are probably mistaken so uh, it's a really important part to, to do those kind of the maintenance so you love the bike, the bike will love you back. Okay, so I'm going to regrease this part and uh, put it back. I don't think that you have to see it uh, when I'm putting stuff together, but uh, I will uh, grease this part and then, then show you how I'm tightening this up. Okay.
the way how to remember how to put this together so those linkage the long part i'll try to show you this way so the long part it's going to the front uh, for the rear suspension the short one so you can see a difference this one here it's a little bit beefier than the bottom one yes it looks like a pp so uh the tiny part goes up the fat part goes to the uh, uh, swing arm and then the small one goes to the bone so if we take this one so it will look like this this one goes in here okay This part, it's obviously on the other side, so it'll go like this, here. Uh, this one we can loosen up a little bit, so it has everything, this one has everything, so I'll put this one in. part we have now we need the other one so the suspension I need to go on the other side to make it easier so we can see what I'm doing maybe completely loosen up this part and try to find the uh, shock So again, the longer part, it's uh, over here. The beefier part goes to the beefy swing arm, and then the smaller part just goes down. Okay, and usually you have a scratches on the on the bottom here, so you know exactly. But you can really you can probably turn this bone around, and it will be exactly the same. So I'm going to tighten up this with uh, 39 newton meters and uh, this will conclude basically a rare linkage maintenance so now it's going to be good for another few months unless i will go and submerge the bike in the water some kind of the nasty conditions uh, okay. this one here it's very easy to tighten up you just basically go Tighten up this one. This one you can put the tool here as well. The last one. So you can tighten up and then hold it from the other side. Those additional two, I have to use the extension. And then under the chain uh, uh, tracker, whatever you call this, I put one here and then a little bit lower to the other one. And this is how I tighten up all those four bolts with the 39 newtonometers, okay? That's it. The one thing which is left, it's basically uh, use about 12 uh, newtonometers on this bolt and then 69 newtonometers on a rear axle. Uh, I like to put a little bit either screwdriver or even the tie, uh, the zip tie between uh, those brake pads. I'm going to blow them a little bit with the air as well to make sure that it's uh, nice and clean over there. And then you can also use a little bit of the brake cleaner. But uh, I just want to make sure that uh, when I put the wheel, this will be nicely spread. So it will be easier for me to, to put so them. So I lie a little bit before I actually put this wheel together. I want to clean my bearing and then put and pack the fresh grease. So uh, I took off this uh, the dust seal. Uh, clean it obviously. I use a small pick or you can use the tiny screwdriver. The way how I like to do it, I just basically put the uh, 
stuff like this cover it's going to be grease everywhere but at least this will help me to clean the juice in. So you can see that even with a lot of grease, it's uh, the, uh, a little bit of the water likes to sneak in and then just cause a little bit of the rust. So that's the reason why it's a, really a good idea to always clean everything before you put this together. Take it five more minutes of your time and then your bike will be more enjoyable to ride. And also extend the life basically of the bearing okay so uh, then what I like to do I just pack uh, a syringe with the grease and I just basically push it push it push it push it this will I couldn't find the bigger syringe I used to have it and then it just disappeared on me but this grease will sit in I will put this one in I'll put a little bit on the spacer as well. Actually, to be honest, doing this with a syringe, it's much more pleasant than with the fingers. And then I just push the dust seal, put the spacer on the uh, brake parts. And then what I'm going to do, I promise, that I'm going to actually tighten up those four bolts or actually check whether they are loose. So I'm going to use uh, 10 millimeters and I presume, I thought it was 17 or 19 newtonometers. Okay. And you can see, I, know, I think that you can see it, how nasty it's over there. And I did this before the indoors actually. Uh, and you can see how nasty is this stuff over there. So when you wash your bike, uh, when you write in a very fine dust like we did in the in the indoor this loves to go inside the small area and you have a nasty bearing afterwards so again use the nasty rug pull my nozzle so you can see that even if it was grease I can still see a little bit of the discoloration. The brain is actually moving quite nice and smooth, so I'm not worried about this, but I just basically want to point you out that uh, doing the, packing the grease in a bearing once a year, maybe not efficient or sufficient. So doing this a little bit more often, whenever you service your tires, it's really a really, really good idea. So I put the fresh grease here. I like this search, even though it's small. Put it in, clean it a little bit. I tighten up with, the, uh, just make sure that the bolts are tight. Uh, some of my friends, they were doing a splatter and they end up with the, with a broken, uh, uh, with a bro bro broken uh, sprocket and I'm also going to go and use some some of the soft brush and then just clean up those teeth to make sure that I'm not when I put the nice fresh uh, clean um, chain this is going to be nice and clean as well so I'm not fighting with the, with the garbage dust, mud, old oil. I really like to clean the chain. I do it actually quite often. Some people they prefer to don't do it, but I think that if you clean it, you can see any damage and also you, uh, you extend the life of your sprocket. Because if the sprocket has a little bit of the dust, sand on the top, it's not going to 
go smoothly but you know in this particular situation it's a nice fresh wheel and so um the other part you know i i know that some of the guys they just basically know how to do it and uh it's all good but those ones who are usually wondering which way the safety pin is supposed to go it's actually this rounded part is just going in the direction where the wheel is spinning my understanding is that if you put this one in a in this direction then if you catch a rock or whatever when the wheel wheel is spinning it's going to take off the uh, safety pin and then you're going to lose your chain and then the linkage also with the uh, you know the way how I set up basically a uh, tensioner between the chain it's just basically by putting a finger my understanding is it's between one and one and a half centimeter over there so my finger is about this much maybe maybe two centimeters so I just put it on and I feel that this is okay and obviously the on the both sides uh, the number 10 is going to be a little bit more on the top part and then make sure that the wheel is nice and center okay super